Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. We have an amazing show. We have two amazing guests with us today, which is a first for the show. We've never had two guests on the show. And so we're super, super excited to talk to Lori Little and Lori Adams, and we'll get to them in just a second. But first of all, while we wait for people to join us live, we, we thank you so much for doing that. We demand that you send questions in on Facebook. Demand. By the way. We demand uh, that you send in questions. Do not request. We demand that no. you send in questions. And uh, Greg is wearing his candy stripe shirt. The junior grandmaster himself <laughs> is in the co-pilot seat as always. And he's very he's very hypnotizing today. Every time he moves more than a couple of inches, I feel like I'm uh, being uh, like lured to sleep or something. So if I if I collapse during the show, that's why. <laughs> I'm like the Twilight Zone. Just like <laughs> don't stare at the middle. It's okay. Now you're yeah. going to love our show. That's right. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, make sure people to uh, subscribe on YouTube and get all of our future episodes and videos and all that good stuff. And then if you want the audio version nestled right here in these uh, between the ears where he's so sort of belong, uh, head on over to iTunes or Stitcher. Thanks, Greg. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so Greg, you mentioned uh, before the show uh, you were booking out uh, for the McDaniel Challenge into what now? What month are we in? I uh, uh, December, dude, and I'm going to book the 21st. I just booked the... And I know I have another guy on standby. He is going to take the 21st of December. You're going to be the January kids, assholes, if you don't get your shit together. All right? 2017. Come on now. All right, we'll talk about we'll later how you can get to, uh, get on the list for the McDaniel Challenge. At this point, it's it's quickly turning into a waiting list, not not a list to sign up for it, so be, be aware. All right, so let's bring in our special list. guests, Lori Little and Lori Adams. Lori's together. How are you? Great. Great. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Lori, Lori squared. All right, so uh, Lori Little, let's start with you and tell us kind of where you are and what you guys do. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Lori Little, and we are in Northern California, about an hour south of Sacramento, um, Central Valley, San Joaquin County area, and um, basically, we sell real estate. <laughs> um, <laughs> with your teammate Lori Adams, and, absolutely. And so, where are you guys based? Like in the same city? Are you are, like how does that all work? Because like you you mentioned some of the cities that you serve, and feel free to do that again, so people like know where to send referrals. Because I'm I'm not from California. There was nothing big enough that I recognized right off the bat as being oh that's the main city. Does that make sense? Correct. Yeah. So Lori Adams, where where is that for you guys? Well, we are based out of Manteca and Manteca, California, and then the closest cities around us that we serve are usually Manteca, Ripon, Tracy, Modesto. We do go into Stockton. I thought okay. we were going up Stockton. I thought we, I thought that was the one we don't speak of. <laughs> For a listing, we'll like, go to Stockton. No. Okay, for a listing. All right, got gotcha. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so uh, so you guys are 50-50 partners in the business, and then uh, so Lori Adams, tell me a little bit about the team structure that is around you guys to support you, and what kind of staff that you have right now. Um, well, initially it was just Lori and I, and we did everything, and of course we added a transaction manager early on, and then we've grown from that. We now have a transaction manager, a listing coordinator, a business manager. And then we have two buyer's agents that support the sales side, and Lori and I are listing agents, and we recently added a new client care coordinator to um, you know, help with, with anything pretty much that comes up that the client needs, um, and to try to also generate and work with online inquiries and stuff like that. Yeah, and that, and we'll get into that because that's one of the one of the more interesting things that I think that'll potentially come out of the conversation is kind of how you've combined those roles of taking care of the client and then using them to also scrub the incoming like online leads and and generate some some additional business and, and different things like that. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited to get into all that. We're going to talk about like how you guys are generating leads, uh, your experiences with Zillow and Trulia compared to like Boomtown, uh, and how you built your team over the years and what your buyers agents do and how you hold them accountable and all kinds of good stuff. So yeah, I'm excited. This is going to be a really, really cool, cool conversation. Uh, we'll also, I, if you guys want to, we can talk about like the partnership and just how that works because I think there's there's a lot of people out there. We've never had anybody on the show that has like a, a full, like real 50% partner uh, other than maybe a husband, you know, out of a husband and wife team, that sort of thing. Um, but I think a lot of agents are kind of interested in, in that, you know, kind of partnering up with somebody and would love to do that. But um, either they do it with the wrong person 
they do it with the wrong structure, or they just don't follow through and do it at all because they're afraid of one of those two things. So I'd love to get into that conversation. But first of all, what do you say we start with a, a question from one of the uh, the old Facebook groups? I think that's a wonderful idea. Good. Yeah, and Greg, I'm so surprised. What you have no rant for today? What's going on? Dude, you cut me off, asshole. I, I'm just uh, sitting. I'm like, fine. I'll just shut up. Just yeah, sit yeah. over here and look pretty. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I said, well, what do you What do you got for us today, Greg? Couple of things. One, I've been bitching and moaning and whining because I couldn't find my dream book that I carry everywhere with me now, and it's all in verses. Ask, believe, receive, and probably spelled something wrong in there, being dyslexic and shit. <laughs> but, but um, I found my I wasn't going to say anything, but you you called yourself out. That's funny. oh no, I I got called out on it before. I'm like, I did. That, that's one I way around the whole I before E, except after C rule is just to eliminate the E. Okay, a little, little known grammatical <laughs> fact. <laughs> just a limit, just cut it out. Um, it's so, so, super, super cool. I'm really found I, I, my uh, my dream book rewriting back in there. Really, really getting back into that. But um, Firepoint, Chris and Paul were here. Got to go to lunch with them. Had a powerful, incredible lunch with them with Terry. Really cool stuff coming down the point. But yesterday, yesterday I was doing my live prospecting calls on the lead gen scripts and, and objections page, and I was at 200 and 38 phone calls deep, about an hour and a half in, and fucking other foot just boom, dropped. $40 million buyer. He's a construction company. His name is Castle Construction. He's been around forever in the area. He's like, Greg, I know you. I know your family. I have $40 million I need to spend on projects. So whatever you can bring to me, I would be, I would love to see. And I'm like, oh, wow. Talk about just making it rain. And so, yeah, I would call yesterday a win on the calls. Nice. All right. Well, it's not often you come across that in your circle prospecting. Goodness. No. No. Right. And, dude, he, it's, it's a fund. He, he, this guy's like a cash cow. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll bleed him out for 40 mil every year. I mean, I have no problem with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Make it sound so nice, don't I? Yeah, I was going to say, how about we bring value to the investor? Okay. So, anyway, there was, <laughs> there was a question that caught my eye. So, it's from the Lead Gen Scripts Injections, the same Facebook group. It's from uh, Linda Riani. It says, hey, peeps. I have a good amount of friends on my personal Facebook page. I like that I keep my business personal rather than becoming too business-like or salesy, um, but I'm torn on whether to open like a business Facebook page or keep it going on my personal. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts? So, Greg, let's start with you on that, and we'll, we'll talk and get to Lori's opinion as well. Sure. Uh, so what I did, guys, a couple of months ago, I was down in Texas drinking and barbecuing with my brothers, and what does a single guy do uh, otherwise after a few beers? Well, he goes and starts friending all the hot chicks that have more than two friends. <laughs> I decided to take my business, and in real estate, by the way, and so I started friending them all. I woke up 150 new friends, and I just said, hey, you know what? If they're on my friends list and they like me uh, like and friend me back, then I can spread my network all over the country. And I said, I'm going to make my personal page more of a professional page where I'm not going to sell anything on it. Um, and for me, it's been a very beneficial thing. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly maxed out at you know 5,000 friends. I have like 185 friend requests waiting right now. And the people in there why I do this is because they're following me. I have like almost 1,800 followers, which is going to be at 2,000 soon, which means I get to touch more lives every time I go to a Facebook Live or something like that. And I want my people, my friends and my family that, that want to support me, I want them to see what I'm doing. So I made that decision to do it. I don't do a lot on my business page uh, because it gets pushed down in the algorithm, and it's too wet cardboard. It's too just like, oh, it's just real estate, when my personality is not just real estate. And if anyone that knows me. Yeah, your personality <laughs> cannot be contained by the real no, estate business. No, will not let it be contained. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Lori, Lori Adams, let's go to you first. So what's your opinion on personal versus business Facebook page? Uh, well, I think uh, it, just like Greg said, it's got to be kind of integrated. And we started out with our own personal pages, and then it was a big, big no-no to post anything business-like on those. So we created the Lori's and Company page. But the combination of linking those two pages back together, I think, is really where um, the success comes in. I don't have 5,000 friends, but I've got almost a couple thousand, which is more than I can keep track of. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of do the friend game, but not as bad as you do. <laughs> and uh, whenever we have a new listing, it gets posted on our Lori's and Company page, and then sometimes I'll share that on my own page, or if we have, uh, like we had today's broadcast, we posted on our Lori's and Company page, and then I shared it with all of my friends just to say, hey, you know, this is what we're doing today. 
So it's kind of an integration, I think, of those two pages is what really has been successful for us. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. <clears throat> um, and I, I'm kind of, um, I would definitely skew more towards you. Like I use my personal Facebook page as my main method of communication with other people that are in business. So I'm, I post a combination. Like at Greg, for the most part, you don't actually post a lot that's truly, truly personal. Uh, no, I mean, I, your personal is always bit. integrated with business. Yeah, but it's very little. Um, it is. Yeah. Very, it is very, I, mean, I post some past memories. I post yeah. some photos, I post Instagram posts like that, but then majority of it is, hey, I'm going live on Facebook, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, just business stuff. Yeah, so for me, it's a little bit more integrated uh, where I'll, I'll post personal things and business, but it all goes to my personal uh, profile. But I do have a business page set up, and, and as we launch, like Greg, the new podcast, Pursuing Results, mm -hmm. that that's going to be like the hub for that podcast, and all the content that comes out as a result of it and, all, and the other podcasting that I do will live on that page. And like Lori said, you integrate it and you like post it there first and then certain select things that you feel like people will be of interest or they're just that maybe they perform well for whatever reason then you share that onto the personal profile but I do like like Greg's idea of you can it's a lot easier to reach out and kind of build your following if you run everything through your, uh, your personal Facebook profile so and then people can message you and the messages get get there a little bit more sooner and they're a little bit easier to track on your personal profile versus messages sent to your business page I don't know if you guys have noticed that sometimes those are easy to lose track of uh, right. Messages that are sent to your business page. Oh yeah, they yeah. go into the black hole. <laughs> they do. <laughs> if you don't respond immediately, sometimes they they go into the black hole. So anyway, uh, yeah. So that that's kind of a we're all kind of. Uh, it, Everybody has a different perspective, and everything has different things that work. There's um, there's a guy that I worked with really briefly um, when he was with Viral Marketing. This was years ago. Uh, he's one of the top three guys in Louisville, Kentucky, and he has an amazing website and a team of people that really pull a lot of content from like the local area and the local events. And it goes on their website and it goes on their Facebook page, and both of those gets a ton of traffic because people are searching for information on those local events, and they're finding it not on like the nonprofit's website and or not on a news site, they're actually finding it on his real estate site or his real estate Facebook page first. Then they're liking the page and then they get a constant stream of uh, local community events, not just real estate related news. So that's a whole other, like if you want to do a page, that's a great way to approach it to kind of lure people in with, with content that has nothing to do with real estate but it's still, it's more community oriented rather than quote like business oriented. Well, you don't have to do real estate you know, jargon. I mean, you can go onto real, uh, realtytimes.com they have buyers and sellers information, the homeowners, HOAs, you know, all this other stuff. You can do, you know, regurgitate some of those articles out that are that are, you know, real estate based, but it's also very informational and fun, you know. So you don't have to be like, well, today's market update is blah da da da. You know, I was like, oh, what? You know, you got to be fun. You got to be able to. <laughs> really? You do market updates. I told you to do one a month when you're with when with for viral. As you always do one market update and a the, month. You don't listen to me though. Of course, yeah, of course. Like, like you say, do something. I'm like, and um, that'll never be done. Yeah, Maybe exactly. Let's, let's, what's the whatever's the opposite of what Matt just said? All right, so uh, <laughs> great. So, turn left, um, going right. <laughs> Lori Little, I wanted to get into something real quick before we uh, we mention some sponsors and, and give some shout outs to people. Uh, so we talked a little bit before we went on the air about how Zillow and Trulia is working for you, and so many people have like mixed reviews and opinions. And I'm just curious if you want to share a little bit about what your team's experience has been with them and how you guys are kind of following up on those leads to make sure you actually get something out of it. Sure. As you mentioned, there's a lot of back and forth of whether that's a good spin for you or not to yeah. Zillow or Trulia. And we made the decision to do it initially as a branding, as part of branding and just having our name out there, knowing that that's a, one of the number one sites that people go to to look for real estate. And um, really, we see a return when we follow up on the leads in a timely manner. And if we don't, then there's no return. So, um, what we found is you can definitely get some good people. There's a, there's a lot that are really cold leads or they're working with other agents or they're just playing around online because they like to look at homes and things like that. But we have found that we it builds our brand. Um, it, it's created credibility for us along with the reviews that are on there as well as um, when we do have our client coordinator working, you know, we've had times where we've been in flux with um, a position, but when we do have that what? person no, there, <laughs> never. I know. Real estate it's, teams don't have any turnover. What are you talking about? <laughs> so when that happens, you you definitely see the numbers go down. But when they're there and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, then 
it happens. So what what's a timely manner for you guys? I mean, especially since you have a client care coordinator who handles that some of that for you. I like to go ahead, Lori. Urgently, like within, you know, when they're on, like Caleb just watches the site, and when they're on the site, he's like, boom, calling them. So that's, that's awesome. the best. But you know, nice. within ten minutes. Okay. Really? Very cool. So <laughs> immediately, if you're if you're there in the office, and within ten minutes, if you're, yeah, okay. I think yeah, the two to five minutes is really what they say. You've got to get on it right right away. Otherwise, they're off to something else, or they're at work and their lunch breaks over, or their manager just walked by and saw that they were online, so they have to get off. That right. type of thing. Yeah. No, it's actually uh, the the stats are that if you get back with them within five minutes, you are twenty one times more likely to work with that client. Yeah. So it truly does pay to be on your toes when it comes to online leads. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so that's I think that gives people a a very valuable insight into why there's so much back and forth cuz Lori Adams, you nailed it uh, when we we're talking before we went on the air, which is uh They'll, they'll they'll usually do it as like they'll sign up for Zillow and then they'll they'll go yeah I'll get back to them you know when when I can or when I when I get to them or whatever the case is. Fibbers. And, uh, yeah, fibbers. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. They're they're little liar liar pants on fire. Uh, but they, they don't ever get back to them. They, they don't do it right away or they don't do it quickly enough to get the return, which would ex totally explain why there's so much negative out there about Zillow and Trulia leads because we all know. 90% of agents are not going to make that call, Lori, immediately. They're definitely not going to make it urgently. It, they're lucky if they make it within 10 minutes or three hours, right? Right. Or three days. Three days. <laughs> exactly. you know, like, that's so back burner stuff because it's, it's a procrastination, procrastination, procrastination mindset. They, you know, oh, I, I, I have so much business now. I'll get to those later. They'll, they'll still be there. It's like. No, dude. It's it's not the way it goes cuz like Matt was saying and the lawyers are agreeing on, you know, if you don't hit it when that when it's red hot, there's you almost have a 90% or more higher chance of never even converting that or even getting them on the phone. True. I mean, our people literally don't remember, you know, being, you know, typing in on some of our lead systems cuz yeah, we suck too at some of our follow-up. That's why we're mm -hmm. hiring FirePoint, you know, to really make it more effective for us and make it easy for us. Um, so you guys, you know, take a little stock of who, where, what you're doing in your business. All, all of you guys who are listening to this, how good are you really at following up and being Johnny on the spot and getting it done? Because well, I'm going to say 99% of, of these suck. Yeah, well, yeah. well and, and speaking of that, I guess, so I'm curious, since you, you mentioned before we went on the other that you'd have Boomtown, do you have all the, like, auto drip campaigns and stuff set up for new leads through that? Like, are, are, are some of the Zillow and Trulia leads at least getting email drips or anything like that from you? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we, we do have um, auto drip set up so that if if they're not being responded to right, like within the first two to five minutes, I mean, we, we do get on phone calls or in appointments or have meetings and things like that sometimes, but um, so if they are not responded to, they will get that, that initial welcome to our website or thank you for contacting us depending on which avenue they came in through. Gotcha. Perfect. That's awesome. Okay. All right, guys. Well, let's, uh, let's say we mentioned some sponsors, give some shout-outs, yeah. and then we'll dive into I'm curious about Lori's stories, uh, you know, of, of coming, coming together and forming the partnership and how they've grown the team, and we'll dive into all that fun stuff. So, uh, first of all, I just want to mention uh, Viral Marketing. You guys are actually clients as well, right? So you guys yeah. do videos and all that good stuff. So, yeah, if you go to Greg's marketingexamples.com, Greg's got a little video there where he describes exactly what they do for him, and you can learn more about them. And then uh, homing in. So make sure you go and download the app. It's a way that uh, homeowners can request valuations from real agents. So it's, uh, it's just speaking of, like, Zillow and Trulia, like, this is the way to keep what happened to us with buyer leads where somebody else figured out how to come in and generate the buyer leads and send, sell them back to the agents. Uh, homing in is the preventative to that for sellers. So if we keep this in-house, this so started by agents that are actively running teams, actively selling real estate, uh, and right now the app is free for everyone to download. So go download it, whether you have an iPhone or Android, doesn't matter. They've got versions for each one. Let's keep this within the real estate industry, and let's give uh, home sellers a way to actually get real valuations from us in an easy way. Uh, and it also gives you an avenue to start communicating with them and actually close on a listing appointment. So that's homing in. Uh, Greg, who do you have to shout out? Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people. Um, okay, I'm going to go down these. Uh, I'm, again, I'm going to miss some of you guys. My deepest apologies. One thing I do want to say, I had an, an amazing McDaniel challenge last night with a guy named Mario out of Texas. 
big old bodybuilder dude. The guy's built like a shit brick house. I mean, just straight up muscle. I think my thighs might equal his wrists. The guy's huge. Um, but we had we had a massively powerful emotional conversion in conversation last night, and we really there was a massive transformation in the way he was viewing some things that were really setting him back mentally. I mean, it was a it was a very powerful three hour conversation, and when we got off the phone together, I mean, he he was a different human being. It was it was so so cool to watch that transformation. So Mario oh. Bo, I, I loved our conversation last night, man. I, I've been thinking about it since then. Um, Ryan, uh, let's see, uh, Carl, Brandon, um, Isman, Ryan, Mike, Mike Holbeck, you're hilarious, by the way, dude. Um, and uh, these guys are all taking the McDaniel Challenge and booking up. And then, hold on, let me get to the calendar here. And good conversations. Andrew, I just booked. Ryan, another Ryan, I just booked. Um, see, Alex, gosh, guys, Dustin, Don, uh, Marianne, Anne Marie. Uh, you guys are so cool. And of course, all the people I'm talking with on a daily basis uh, on all these different, I can't keep up all of the different modes of conversations that we, we do on all these different platforms. But thanks for watching. Thanks for doing it, guys. I love talking to you. Keep bringing it to me. I love the pop up questions that you guys are bringing me. Uh, so never stop. Keep them coming. I love you all. Cool. There we go. All right, and then Drew uh, messaged me on Facebook asking how to get into the McDaniel Challenge. So I told him to text Greg right this second and uh, gave him your phone number. So hopefully Drew will get, be getting his uh, scheduled. So, Lori, let's, uh, let's turn back to you. So, uh, so Lori Adams, give us some background kind of on yourself and how you guys came to meet and start your partnership. Um, well, I've been in retail since 94, and I ran into uh, this Lori uh, in 2006 when I kind of left resale, kind of a little burnout, and went into new home sales. And she was just coming out of HR and had gotten her license and was transitioning into new home sales. And that's kind of where we met, and we worked together in 2006 at a Dell Web community doing new home sales and um, we were fortunate and I think this really speaks to the issue of how to how to have partnerships we were fortunate that in that um, environment under the corporate structure we were able to work as partners and see how that worked yeah that's huge. Uh, yeah and then so we sort of had that background and knew that 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 did work before we in 2010 went out and just started working together doing doing resale. Yeah, it's okay. important to have good partnerships. I mean, I partner with my father and one of our good friends, Chris. And you know, when you when you find that mix that that, that just works, it's you know you never mess with it again. Just leave that recipe alone because there's so many failed partnerships because one person gets a big ego or doesn't do the work or steals from you or whatever. It just ends up you know like a plane into the side of a mountain. It's a horrible disaster. Um, that's why you guys, I'm, 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 one, I'm taking notes here on what you guys are doing so I can take it back to my team. Like, hey, guys, look, we're screwing up. The Lori said so. Okay. <laughs> I don't uh, well, know. Oh, that's funny. Uh, well, Lori Little, fill us in a little bit. What do you guys feel like your strengths are? What does each one of you bring to the, the partnership that's a little bit different? Well, what, that's the thing is we definitely are different, the, the two of us. And, and the further we go, I mean, we've been working together now for 10 years, and the longer we work together in our business, we see how different we are. We just did a, the strengths finder um, training, and yeah, yeah. that really showed us a lot of things. But um, <laughs> you know, I would say um, Lori's more of um, to make it simple. She's the marketing person. She's got a lot of great ideas, and and she's she's a better dreamer than I am. Um, I'm very I'm more analytical. Um, I like to look at the numbers, what's that, get? and I'm more probably conservative in, in that way where I'm not, she'll take the leap of faith, I'm more like, wait, what are we doing? And, uh, <laughs> so with that, you know, over the years, we've had um, a lot of great things that have happened, we've had a lot of things that we've butted heads about, um, but through it all, we've got ethically, we're the same, we've, we yeah, both are huge. very ethical people, I think that um, our lifestyles are, are similar so we believe in a lot of the same things the way that we treat our clients is, is the same um, and that's important because you can't just partner with somebody just because they do a good job at selling you have to have someone that's going to sell like you do and care like our one of our big things is really caring about the client and um, 
So we don't work with a lot of investors because it's not a relation. It, typically, it's not a huge relationship yeah. build there. Just show me the numbers. Yeah, exactly. And so um, you've got to find somebody that works with you that, and then trust. We went through stages of um, not that we didn't trust one another. It was more the guilt that we had if one of us left the office before the other person left the office. Mm -hmm. Is she going to think I'm not pulling my weight? So you have to have that trust and know that each person is going to be contributing, but we contribute very different. Yeah, yeah. That's very yeah, true. Greg, Greg contributes a lot of uh, on-camera time. Uh, but yeah, it's... it's <laughs> <laughs> so I have to, I have to give you a hard time in this partnership, but uh, yeah, I mean, Greg, Greg and I are very, very similar. I'm not quite as you know numbers driven, analytical, maybe as you are, Lori, but we definitely have that dimension to us where Greg's the bigger dreamer, and I'm the you know a <laughs> little bit more realistic. Now let's figure out how to actually get there, or let's let's set a goal that that we know we can actually achieve that motivates us to work hard. Where Greg's like ten x it, ten x everything. And, um, I, and I got I got a forty million dollar buyer by doing my calls. I ten x it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't work like that. That motivates you, Greg. Like that that works for you. So what? It's just it's different for me. Um, and so it's funny, ladies. We actually did a show. Uh, it's been almost uh, eight or nine months ago now, but uh, we did a show where basically like. Uh, play devil's advocate with each other and shared our goal setting <laughs> philosophies and essentially it was just me yelling at Greg because he's <laughs> just for being so Greg and talking about our different philosophies that was that was a fun show to do because it's uh, it really exposed how different we are and we're the same way like we worked we got a chance to work together first before we started this podcast uh, and we did not realize like we we set out to do this podcast with the intention of like coaching agents together and then we realized a couple of things. Number one, coaching agents on an ongoing basis sucks. Mm -hmm. It's very, very difficult. You have to be the right personality for that. And number two, uh, we could not coach agents together. We are we're so like we just realized that there's such a difference in what we would recommend people to do. We could not coach people together. That was something that we had no idea going in. We thought we were pretty simpatico on stuff. Uh, but it's more. You guys mentioned like the values part. That's it's so huge because Greg and I both have like a heart to help people. It's just how we go about it was a little bit different. But we we both have that that same value system. So that's it's so so big to have that. So let's uh, turn back to you, Lori Adams. So you mentioned uh, like the marketing angle, and you're kind of more of the dreamer and the idea person. So what are some of the things that you guys have implemented over the years that has worked in terms of marketing? Oh gosh, well. Um you know, just I would say, just honestly, our our farming. I mean, that was and and our networking. I mean, that was our our biggest thing. It was funny that Lori brought that up because immediately when she said that, you know, oh, Lori's the big dreamer and she gets these ideas. I had to talk her into doing this show. So <laughs> I was like, that was my big idea. Hey, I signed you up for this podcast. <laughs> well, thank you. Be awesome. you. It's gonna yes. be an, it's gonna come out. And you're gonna be like, damn, we should do more of those. But well. back to the farming thing, it's not, what I'm talking about though is not just um, uh, farming, just to give you, well I mean it is farming and of course farming is consistency and, and, but we do mail, we do US mail or you know every door direct and we've done it for years and what we send out I think is a little bit, um, well I, I feel like everybody's doing it now but they weren't when we started. In 2010 the market was in the toilet and there was uh, REOs everywhere and short sales everywhere and nobody was doing any traditional real estate so we came in doing traditional real estate which is all I knew and and we started just farming with these market updates and we put our market updates on a shell postcard with our branding and we just did them every month. We ran them on the copier. We hand carried them and put them on the porch. I mean, we got them out, That's awesome. and it and it worked. And that was really our biggest. What started us with getting that and just net general networking because we both have a large sphere of influence, and mm -hmm. uh, that really got us started. And it was much much later on that we added, you know, doing some tricks with open houses, and then we added uh, the online lead generation and that Zillow piece and you know just adding more pillars as as we got money but frankly <laughs> that, that pesky little money problem thing yeah <laughs> but it sort of you know it started with the hustle right it started with yeah. getting out there into the farms hand copying stuff hand delivering stuff uh, and, and just so I understand it correctly is that still one of the pillars are you guys still doing that still mailing the whole nine oh, yeah. yards yeah. okay it, it is 
One of the, I want to ask you guys this because I was in the same boat you guys were in 2010. You know, just shit up a creek, and I, I I didn't know how to do REO. I, we just kept. I mean, we had to be forced into it, but I mean, we didn't do much. So we did traditional. What was your motivator? What was your driver, and why to keep doing it? And how did you stay mentally? Well, I'm going to say stable, but I'm, it's not going to be the right word. But mentally competent that you know this is some hard hard work. You know, how'd you keep going? Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, for me, I didn't know any different because I was I, my, I was in human resources before I got into real estate sales, and, and then I was in new home sales. So I just I came out in like November of 2009, and I did everything I possibly could not to have to go out and find business because I was actually scared <laughs> to do it. And so um, really in the beginning of 2010, we really didn't have an option and that's where my dreamer friend Lori comes in because she drug me along and got me out to, to do things but because we had the two of us I think was a big thing mm -hmm. because we had that pressure that we needed to be there and we made it we made a decision we went to a, actually a training class during that time probably with me trying to not go out and work um, and <laughs> one of the things <laughs> the instructor said <laughs> Is you've got to treat this like a job, you know. As much mm -hmm. as we talk about this being a flex, you know, having flexibility, is this is a job, and you have to put into it what you want to get out. So we made an agreement to be at work at eight o'clock in the morning, meet together, have a conversation about what we need to do for our business. And in the beginning, we did a lot of it together. Uh, we would go on listing appointments together. We would door knock. Well, we didn't do a lot of door knocking. We did a little, <laughs> but we did a little, yeah. Um, but we would we would do that stuff together, and then from there it just continued to grow. But um, with our current business manager we have, she was actually doing some consulting with us at the time, and really helped us focus on also making sure everything was branded. So not only were we starting to do a new farm and and putting it out there, everything looked the same, so that every month they were seeing the same picture with the same tagline. And um, so even if they threw it away and didn't look at what the content was on it, which we know that that's what they do a lot of times, they were seeing the same look. And then now you drive to the drive through or go somewhere and somebody's like, oh, yeah, you deliver that stuff to my house. Oh, I've seen you here. And so it just takes time. And um, the question, though, is how do we keep motivated? And I think part of it is we just needed money. And we knew that if we kept doing what we were doing, and nobody else was doing it at that time because everybody was focused on the short sales and the, and, um, the foreclosures and stuff, we knew that our farms were going to turn around because this market wasn't going to stay like this forever. So we started that in some new communities that – um, you know, or we knew they weren't going to sell for another two years, but now we've got business coming back from that. So we put some sweat equity in at that time. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. That's exactly what we did. I mean, everyone was going after the short sale, and then because they were short sighted, um, mm -hmm. and a lot of those agents who did short sales are out on their thumb now, or actually out on their ear. If it's the real, you know, the real saying, um, <laughs> because <laughs> I'm like out on their thumb. That sounds awkward, um, but you know it's a uh, it, 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 it was interesting to watch the tides turn and all your your hard work, your sweat equity, your your proper mindset and your drive because everything goes in a cycle is now paying off in dividends for you. That's, that's fantastic. That can be you know told to every any single agent out there right now that's listening to us either live or in the recording to the fact that look your current situation that you're in right now is not where you're going to stay forever. You have got to be excited about what's going to be coming down the pipe. I had a talk with a lady today. She's all down and out in the dumps because she, you know, she wasn't getting any business. I'm like, bitch, you just started two months ago, and you and you moved to a new city, and you're bummed out. Stop it. She's like, but I don't want to hear the word no. I'm like, you should celebrate the word no. You should jump up and down. You should high five that person. You said no. Boom, player. Nice. All right, I gotta go. See you later. Because you know what? You're one. Yeah. You're one no yes to uh, closer to a yes. You should be pumped about the negatives because there's going to be positives. And as soon as you change the way you look about things like that, your world's going to go from all doom and gloom and death and destruction to light, bright, happiness, b glorious future. You guys Absolutely. had that mindset. Yeah. Very cool. Well, talking about so you've got you had the farming kind of up front that, uh, but that takes a, takes a while to pay off. So you mentioned the networking as well. Give me an idea of kind of what you guys were doing for for networking. Well, Lori could really tell you because she like has dated everybody in our town. And 
So that helps. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Oh, trust me, we have met people, Ooh, I mean, random awesome. people, and she's like, oh, I went to prom with him. So <laughs> that's, let's clarify. I have not dated, but I have went to, because I'm in the same town. I grew up in this town, so I've been here since I was four. So there's a lot of people that come back and been our clients. And yes, I went to Christmas formals or proms with them. And so, you know, you got to work your spirit. That's hilarious. Oh my pick up your old, just pick up your old black book and start back at eighth grade. That's All yeah. right, so Bobby Joe, what's going on? <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. Okay, so uh, so Lori knows a lot of people in town, and uh, all right, what 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 else did you guys do? <laughs> a lot of times in town, man. Come on. Okay. Well, I did more of the you know business side of of networking because I moved out here and didn't know a soul, so I wasn't born and raised here. So when I moved out here in early uh, 2000, I started by joining the chamber and joining Rotary, and I think that there's a mindset of doing those things and expecting an instant okay I've got 10 referrals now because I went to Rotary last week and that's a erroneous expectation and then sometimes people think well you know it's a lot of money to go to Rotary and um, but it really is just like you know you just gotta shift your mind and think I'm meeting people it's like live Facebook is what mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. you know you're it's the social network of the past but you know Rotary Chamber all of that and so from all of those people that I knew and then also from from church we uh, we actually started early on with a coach too and coaching imagine that concept <laughs> and um, she had to start our database and so you know we drew all those circles in and threw it all up in a database and got rolling with keeping in contact with those people yeah awesome sure you know, here's a question for you that a lot of people I'm gonna ask I and mean, I'm gonna ask you guys you guys are both going to a to a church do you I mean, I've been asked this question I want your opinion on this do you farm your church um, not in the traditional sense in other words I don't um, send out necessarily regular monthly mailers but you know of course I friend everybody at church on Facebook and I have their contact information we're really bad about um, hitting our database the only thing we really hit our database with right now is viral marketing so you're not walking into church early, slipping your business card and all the little all the no. Bibles down every row. No. <laughs> I, I did try that this weekend. Uh -huh. <laughs> Face up. <laughs> <laughs> we but try you know not to be ambulance chasers, or we try not uh. to do. You know, we we really try to make things that is that we're providing some piece of uh, content or something that would be useful with whatever information we're giving, and not making anybody feel forced to use us but want to use us because of the information we're providing. Correct. Yeah, makes sense. Education-based marketing. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It, it's, it's the most effective way. I mean, Matt's a millennial. I'm almost a millennial. Uh, I'm going to keep, keep telling myself that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's the way marketing needs to be done now. It's no longer, hey, it's Greg McDaniel, the greatest real estate agent in the East Bay. No, no. It's got to be a story being told or ringing value to the other people like you guys are doing with the content stuff. I go to realtytimes.com all the time, and like I talked about earlier, and pull articles down and do little videos on them. I find it to be very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. All right, so uh, Lori Adams, let's uh, turn to you again and um, kind of describe, we talked about the partnership and stuff like that, and, and you guys have uh, some different roles. You guys both take listings. You guys are both responsible for the decision making, and then it sounds like you've got someone that kind of handles the actual operation. So let's let's talk about kind of the free, the freedom that you guys have and within the structure that you built. So what do you each do, and what do your daily lives look like as a result of this partnership? Well, for the most part, you know, we have a we have a huddle with the team in the morning at 8:30, and then we're off to our, um, you know, our just our general daily schedule, which is um, uh, prospecting and going to appointments in the afternoon, and um, you know, lead follow up, of course. And our goal, it's not we're not 100% there yet, but of course, our goal is to only do appointments, prospecting, and lead follow-up and, and kind of offload everything else. Now that we have a business manager in place, which we've had now for about a year and a half, um, she's been able to take a whole lot off of us because once you start building a team, now you go from being just a realtor to being some kind of a, a manager and, and, you know, and that's a whole nother job really. Yeah. And 
so so shifting and getting her involved has really really helped take things off of us. Um, but at the same time, we've had a lot of turnover, and so she's been stepping in and filling in for our listing coordinator. So Lori and I have still been trying to get out of her way and allow her to just just do her job and try to stay out of the day to day. And that's probably our biggest challenge but it is our ultimate goal is just to step back we do lead follow-up prospecting going on listing appointments mm -hmm. um, and you know KO does all the rest of running the business you're, okay. you're doing you're doing your strengths is what you're saying uh, it's and that's why actually Lori mentioned that we just did the Gallup strength finder we did that in conjunction with a lady um, I don't know you might want to google her Karen Bates she's a really great speaker and um, uh, she brings a lot of value about identifying who you are, what your strengths are, what fills your cup, and then creating your work and life environment around that. And for me, that's the most recent thing that I've learned that has been like, wow, eye-opening. I feel now like I can do this. So mm -hmm. we're about ready to turn the corner and go to the next level. That's awesome. That is really, really awesome. Oh, Karen Bates, cool. you said? Karen Bates. Karen Bates. And what's the name of her um, veterans mortgage company, Lori? I don't know that. Military Home head. Loans? That That's it. Sense? I think that is it. Okay. Military Home Loans. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, she does a great class. Okay, awesome. So you guys took the uh, the strengths finders. So let me ask you this. So your day starts at 8.30, then you got appointments in the afternoon. Do you guys really, uh, have you been able to kind of eliminate the nights and weekends stuff since you're not out showing buyers all over God's creation? Um, Lori, go. No, we have not. I mean, the, the honest <laughs> answer is no. We try no. for that every... But I will say that we have... That has definitely changed for us, and we don't work as, as many, and, and it's more scheduled and a little bit better planned than it was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, really managing that schedule is so hard because, as we all know, we only get paid if we close something. So you always feel like you need to make um, exceptions. I'm going to go here. And um, I, I struggled with that, you know, being single and not having kids. I never felt like I had the excuse to say I've got to go home or something. Yeah. But um, over time, we've really worked to try and manage that schedule, and I think we're getting better and better at it. Um, we, do, we don't work Sundays. Um, nice. We awesome. might do a little bit of paperwork type, but we really – for the most part, do not work Sundays, and even and on Saturdays, Saturdays when we work, we don't work. Um, it, you know, we start a little bit later, and if we do an open house or something like that, but we it, we're not there till five or you know later in the evening. So okay. it's usually a half day or something like that. Nice, that's awesome. How, how are you guys setting the expectations with your clients up front? Like as far as what 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 did they expect out of you when you start working with them? Well, a big game changer for us early on was setting up our voicemail to indicate what our working hours were, and we combined that with our email to reflect the same thing, and then we would say evenings and weekends by appointment. And so and then also when we go on the appointment, we would try to be sure and explain now, because one of the biggest aggravations to me is like right now we're in such an instant world. Everybody's like, boom, man, I called you three times and I can't get you. Like, yeah, I'm with somebody else. I mean, <laughs> did that never pop in your mind? I, I wonder. And so it's frustrating. And That's so funny. setting that those is expectations funny. is the only way that you can kind of try to manage that and not want to strangle somebody. And, <laughs> yeah. really. Oh, no, it's oh so now the truth comes out, yeah. You okay. guys are really loosening her up. She's starting to... <laughs> and I haven't even had anything to drink, so. Oh well, well you're in the kitchen. Go to the fridge. <laughs> Tell me. I mean, I'm, I'm Lori's. I'm, I'm just like Bailey's you guys, in that coffee. You know, it, uh, when I got in the business, I told everyone, "Hey, man, I'm open 24, 24 7, 365. If my phone's not on, it's either I'm asleep or it's dead, and I'll call you back when I'm awake or when it, when it recharges." Those jackasses actually took me up on the freaking. <laughs> yeah, they you know? do. And so I just broke one day. I'm like, "Fuck all y'all! No more of this bullshit." Here is how I work, and I said, "Look, I don't work on the weekends. Okay, that's my family time." And I'm nodding my head when I say this. You know, big smile. You understand that, right? Because you don't want to be the jerk that says no, do you? <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> and I have never had a client not work with me when I tell them I don't work on the weekends. Now, I worked the last three weekends because I had clients there in super time crunches and we had to get them into something. But an average weekend, this weekend, 
I'm not doing shit, man. I'm going for a hike on Saturday. I'm gonna lay around like a fat bastard on Sunday. You know, it's gonna be great. But I have clients that call me on like if if, if they had to get a hold of me and go see something like this. Uh, Greg. Uh, yeah, hi. It's uh, your client. Um, so there's this house I want to go see. What do you think? And I'll be like this. All right. All right, but I'm wearing my shorts. Is that okay? You know, because I want to be comfortable. Is that cool? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. We're going to be in the shorts, too. I'm like, good, because I'm not dressing up for your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And, and they still like me. Imagine that. <laughs> yes, yes it, is, it is shocking. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was one of the things that impressed me about Greg when I first met him was we, we kind of dug into his business a little bit. He's like, yeah, I don't, I don't work evenings or weekends. I'm like, really? That's that's actually like like you have seem to have a handle on your business. What what is this? What is what is going on here? <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah, exactly. and it's worked. I mean, as long as I've known you, you've always been like that. I mean, so the fact that you've worked the last three a little bit on the last three weekends is shocking because I would have never guessed. Yeah, but I mean, my clients we we put both of them, one of them they had to buy a house because they're, they're living with the Mrs.'s mom, and that is shit is not working out. All right, <laughs> um, and then the other one we sold their house, and they got a, I mean, they, we had a timeline to get them into something because we had a sixty day rent back, and so we had to you know, we had to get make shit happen immediately. So yeah, very good. Cool. That's why I did it. All right, all right. One thing we're working on is our avatar of really like who is nice. our client, nice. and by doing that, I think that you it helps you to no, is it somebody I need to refer out because they're not going to work with what the way our process works? Right. It doesn't mean they're bad, or it doesn't mean you know. But but really, we have to find what works for us and the process that we have set up. Yeah, absolutely. So that, otherwise, you lose it, just like what you said. Oh yeah, you want to commit homicide, you know, on every one absolutely. of your clients. Um, you know, one of the one things I always joke around about, but all those clients that are kind of jerk offs. You're like, you know what? You just don't fit who I want to work with, and then find the agent you hate the most, and be like, Bob, I got a referral <laughs> for you. <buddy." laughs> that's a really good, good tip. That's because you, oh, that's that, awesome. you take that, you know, that that jerk close to you. He, they think you love them, and you're like, hey, have fun. <laughs> <I'm out." laughs> Damn it. I can't do anything about that. I have a mute button, but I, can't, I don't have a button that blurs things out. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, refresh, uh, refresh our memory on exactly where you guys are at so people can keep you in mind for referrals. We're out in the Central Valley of California, uh, Tracy, Rippin, Manteca, close to Modesto and Stockton, but we don't say that. We don't say the Stockton word. We talked about this. <laughs> All right. So Central Valley, our south of Sacramento. And uh, what's the best way, if someone does want to send you a referral, what's the best way to get a hold of, uh, of either one of you or, or which one is the best to go through? Well, the gosh, Lori, what is the best way? I, well, I think the best way is really calling our, I mean, where you're going to get somebody on the phone right then is calling our um, office number, which is our client co care coordinator would probably pick up the phone, but at least he will get the information to us um, right away. And um, that number is 209 uh, 906. No. 907. No, no. No, that's not our number. Oh, I don't know our number. I do. Oh, that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> Can I do the number? Yes. Please. Okay. Yes. It's 209-607-9606. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> All right, well, here, here's, here's the solution to that, okay? Oh, so you guys funny. start your own real estate podcast, and every time you give out that phone number, <laughs> that's the only reason I remember Greg's phone number. I can recite <laughs> it in my sleep. Because oh. every show he gives it out about twice. 925-915-1978. Oh. I'm pretty sure I could say it backwards if pressed and I hadn't had anything to drink. So can okay. you say it backwards, Matt? No, I can't. <laughs> that number Eight, will go seven, directly. Seven nine one. <laughs> oh, that's just so All right, so that that's the way to get in contact with you guys, and I just gave out Greg's number again. So the McDaniel Challenge. Um, if uh, if anybody wants to take you take you up on that, man, they're they're just about oh, yeah. January. Uh, no, they are in January now. Uh, officially? They, All right. they are officially in January. You're the January kids. Congratulations. You sat on the fence, jerk offs. <sighs> but a good thing, we're gonna get getting a get we're gonna get twenty seventeen rocking for you right out of the gate. Um guys, what is the McDaniel challenge? Let me clarify what it actually is. I'm gonna go very long just to irritate Matt. Um it's gonna be an hour or two, um, or no or more if we need it. 
uh, of one-on-one -on -one personal coaching and training. So if there's anything that's hindering, stopping you, blocking you, not allowing you to get where you want to be, live the life you want to live, you know, hang out and talk with me. Look, I'm not the smartest man in the world. I'm not. I've just been in this business for longer than God has been up in the sky. And when Earth was invented, I was I was a real estate agent. Okay. So I've seen a lot of this stuff. I can help you through stuff. I've been through trials and tribulations in my in my life, and maybe there's an opportunity I can help you. I truly love you guys. I really want to see you succeed. Um, that's why I do this. There's too many of you that are so um, such an amazing human being, and you are not being given the right advice from people who haven't sold real estate for a long period of time or maybe never have. So come hang out with me. Okay, it's gonna be in January. Yes, I joke around being the January kids, but hey, if I don't have any January kids, then I'm not gonna be able to keep my keep doing what I absolutely have a passion for. So, sign up, guys. Please message me on Facebook. Follow me on Facebook. Call me on my phone. 925-915-1978. I will see you guys soon. All right. Well, with that, guys, uh, so we've got Jason Hartman coming up again, uh, one Ooh. of the, the few repeat guests that we have. He's going to be on the show again on Monday. That's going to be awesome. Jason was phenomenal the first time around. I think we're actually going to dig deeper into uh, probably the farming and other advice he has for agents. We talked about, like, wealth building and some bigger picture stuff last time, but he has some awesome, really, really cool tactical stuff uh, from his days as one of the top REMAX guys in the world. Nice. Nice. Uh, I think we're going to talk to him about that stuff. So that's coming up on Monday. That's going to be a great show. So Lori Adams and Lori Little, ladies, thank you so much for joining us. You guys were awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You guys were a lot of fun. Yes. And uh, in the general public, we will see you guys on Monday. Everybody have a great weekend. See you guys.